Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Pace Athletics Alumni Spotlight presented by New York Presbyterian, the official healthcare provider of Pace Athletics. Joining me today is 2019 Pace graduate of the men's basketball team, Greg Polian. Greg, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. You know, you um, are coming off a sensational season playing overseas professionally. Um, you're playing in England. Um, you played for the Hemel Storm this past year. You actually were the league MVP, player of the year of the NBL. Um, just a sensational season. I averaged over 22 points, 11 rebounds a game. Um, you know, I guess we're going to start there. Um, you know, what were your kind of your expectations going into this season? Um, did you exceed your expectations? Were you surprised at the success you were having? Kind of just walk us through the year. Um, so basically, uh, I don't know if you guys knew the year prior to that, um, fresh, out of, fresh out of college, our year was cut short because of COVID. So um, we weren't able to finish. So um, I came back home around March. And um, in my mind, I was just like, I kind of kind of knew I was going back in a sense. So I kind of just had a goal where I was like, you know what, let me make this count. The fact that I'm going back, um, I want to just dominate, you know, just completely dominate. And I actually did have the goal of, um, of MVP in my head. I wrote it down and I just constantly worked towards it, manifested it every day. And I just worked towards it, honestly speaking. Um, I really wanted to achieve that goal. I felt like it would be good on the resume to have, to, to lead to a better, um, a better contract, you know, a better situation, things of that nature. Um, so yeah, that was my mindset going in, honestly speaking. I just wanted to win MVP. I want to be the best player I could be in that league. And um, I, mean, I think I did, I think I accomplished it. Now, so you obviously had some familiarity going into this season. Um, do you feel like that, you know, if if you didn't have that familiarity, if it was kind of right, you know, if it was your first year or whatever, you know, you wouldn't be able to have the success that you had? Mm, I think I think it would have been, I think it would have been a little bit more difficult in terms of, um, you know, kind of getting adjusted to the teammates, the team, uh, the coach, and the style of play that they play out there because overseas is a different style of play compared to um, American it's not completely different, but there are certain things that they can do over there that you can't do in the U.S. and vice versa. So I think um, I think that definitely helped, but I still also feel like I put that work in over the summer when people weren't working as much um, because of COVID. So uh, I think that, that also led to me uh, having a real successful year, in my opinion. Now, kind of just uh, rewind a little bit, you know, coming out of college, um, you know, uh, played two years of pace, you know, you know, played well for, for, um, pace, um, you know, how, why don't you just walk us through the process of signing with the Hemel storm? Um, you know, that team, that league kind of, where were you, what were your options? What were you looking at? Kind of, and then what kind of made you, you know, go there? Yeah. Um, honestly speaking, it was really, it was really up in the air for me at the, at one, at one point, because uh, after graduating, you know, I got my degree, um, basketball was on my mind but at the same time I was like you know what I could I get a job you know well-paying job um I went to Pace they pretty well you know academically well they have good connections and things of that nature and then also someone brought to me my attention of just playing professional basketball so I went to a camp I did well I actually got connected with an agent that I represented a couple of my old teammates and stuff like that and he just honestly just gave me this offer and I, and I just took it you know I was just like you know what let me just uh let me just take it because I love basketball I love doing this you know, I played pretty well at pace, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I felt like I felt like it was a good decision for myself. I, I bet it on myself. I invested in myself. And I took that leap of faith. And I honestly feel like it was a good decision for me personally because it shows that, um, you know, you can do anything you put your mind to at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? I feel that leap of faith is what you need to start off to jumpstart your career and stuff like that. And I just wanted to make it happen for myself. So I feel like that was really it. That, that was one of the few offers that I had. I had another offer in Vietnam, but it was a short-term offer. It wasn't really a long-term offer. This was more of a long-term offer, and I, I just took it. I felt like it was the best deal. My, my parents were cool with it because it was an English-speaking country. It wasn't, like, too, you know, different. It wasn't, like, in Asia or somewhere where they don't speak the same language as you, so it wouldn't be, like, a different, you know, it wouldn't be as comfortable as it was. So I feel like it was just a great decision for myself, and, and I made the most out of it, honestly. Um, you know, you know, obviously still leaving the country, going far from home, you know, what kind of, were, what were your initial thoughts when you got there? Maybe what were your initial thoughts before that? What were you kind of anxious about? What, what was going through your mind there? Speaking, I traveled my whole life. Prior to um, Pace, I was in Kansas, actually. So that right there, that whole experience right there was pretty, uh, was pretty, you know, different for me. Um, we traveled, I traveled a lot throughout sports my entire life. So being away from home wasn't really necessarily hard. 
it was really hard during the whole COVID time, you know, I can't lie, because we weren't able to go out and explore and enjoy ourselves the way that we wanted to, because we was pretty much stuck in the house. But um, I think going into it, I was just more anxious about just playing, just being able to be a professional, you know what I'm saying? Just being able to represent my country um, across the seas and, and just playing the best, being the best version of myself. I was really anxious about that. I wanted to play. I just really wanted to experience it and just have fun. And um, that was just my mindset going into it, to be honest. I wasn't really scared. I wasn't really uh, nervous about anything. I was just more, you know, anxious to play and, and, and go out there and just have fun. You know, yeah, that, that all makes sense. Um, you know, obviously, you know, going from, you know, pace, going to play professionally, it's going to be a step up, you know, talent-wise, skill-wise, you know, different players. Was there any t- type of moment where you were where you were like, well, you know, I fit in here, I'm going to be okay. You know, obviously yeah. you were more than okay, but was there any a moment where you were like, we're, we're good now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was the first day of practice. Um, so I don't know if people know this, but most of the time when we come up, when we come back, like, as soon as we get into the country, um, they fly us out there. It's about like a eight, seven to eight, nine hour flight from New York to um, England. And that day, um, since there's a time difference and all that, you leave, I think you leave during the day in, in the US and you get there like, I think midday or nighttime, I'm not sure, but it's a time difference. So you gotta get adjusted to the time and all that, right? And then that day you have practice. So, and that practice, you know, you got jet lag, you're tired, you've been on, you've been sitting all day and stuff like that. And I went out there and I practiced and I and I did have a really good practice. And that point, I was like, you know what, I can do this. Like I know that I'm, I'm obviously, you know, under a lot of distress. I'm tired, I'm jet lag and all that, and I still perform the way I perform. I'm like, I'm good. And that was the first day of practice. So I was like, I'm straight. I'm good. It's no problem. At all. So that was that was my aha moment. I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I suppose if you could practice well under those conditions, uh, yeah, you'll be good to go. Um, you know, going off of that, you know, we obviously know, you know, how good the NE10 is. At, you know, pace plays in the NE10. You know, great Division Two league, uh, tremendous competition. You know, do you believe that that competition, um, you know, helped you kind of get acclimated, kind of help you prepare for, you know, overseas? Hundred percent, hundred percent. The NE ten league is, is one of definitely the top ten uh, top divisions and then division two by far. Um I mean you got competition everywhere across the board. You got Bentley, you got um, Le Moyne, just St. Rose, you know, those are just a couple of teams that are just good. And I feel like every team brings a different style of play. You know, every team is not the same. And that's the thing that was different for me personally, um, coming into division two. Like you you run against certain teams that um shoot the ball very well. You got teams that drive. You got teams that push the ball. You got teams that do just many different things in their own different way. And I feel like the NE10 brings that um, that diversity and style of play. Um, so it definitely prepared me. It definitely prepared me for uh, overseas, 100%. You know, you um, are not, you know, you're very recent grad, uh, just a few years ago, a couple of years ago. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously you're still staying connected, you know, with the team, you, you check in with the guys, you were on the team with most of the guys, you know, do you, you stay connected with those guys? Do you stay connected with Coach Healing still? For sure, for sure. I still stay connected with Brandon, Austin. Uh, I know they're still on the team. Um, I know the young guys as well, Martin, Jordan, and um, shout out to those guys. Um, I always talk to Coach Healing. You know, I was asking, you know, how's the team looking, things of that nature. Uh, I know this year that they're playing against um, Syracuse, so that's a, I'm definitely going to tune into that, to that game. That should be very exciting. I'm very happy for those guys just to get on that level and play on that stage and be able to travel and experience that Division One, you know, level of competition. Um, so, yeah, I've been definitely in contact with those guys. I'm just giving little tips here and there, watching the games, stuff like that. Like, yo, you know, I see certain things that I think they can improve more on or, or things that they're doing well as well, you know, just compliment them and help them with their own career and their own college career and stuff like that. Now you're, um, you know, obviously coming off a tremendous year. Uh, you know, we, as we mentioned, the player of the year in the league, um, had a great year with the Hemel Storm. You know, I, we'll, we'll leave it at this kind of what's next for you. You know, are you going to continue playing professionally? I think we spoke earlier. You think you're going to continue on? You know, what's next for Greg? Um, honestly speaking, I think I think I proved my worth. I think I proved my worth. And I think it's time for me to benefit off my worth. I feel as if um, I put the work in, I stayed patient. Um, and uh, I think the work, my body of work speaks for itself. So I think now it's time for me to elevate my game, elevate my uh, position, and maybe move on to another better contract elsewhere in a different country. And if that's not the case, then uh, maybe I can give it back to my community, um, my coaching and, and things of that nature and trying to maybe start a coaching career. If that's not the case, that doesn't work out for me. But um, right now I'm just working out for figuring out different options for myself. Obviously I want to play overseas and things of that nature, but 
it's a tough thing to get into, you know. It's, it's, it's like a job, so you got to get an interview. You know, what I'm saying they want to. It's whatever the team needs at the end of the day. So, like I said, me and my agent be working very hard trying to get that position, trying to get that role, trying to get that contract. But um, like I said, you know, have options. Like I said, um, I built my resume up as much as possible. I would like to be a coach. I would like to give back to my community and then help kids out and things of that nature. And um, I think that's the future for me personally. That's awesome. That's very cool. Um, well, Greg, we're gonna, I'm going to leave you there. Um, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll talk soon. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.